Hello and welcome to the Robotic Gorilla Lesson by Robocamp. This is part one out of four in total. And this means that we're about to learn some very interesting facts about gorillas. And also, we will find out what we can do to help them live and thrive in their natural habitat. In the upcoming parts of this lesson, we will build the robot understand how it is supposed to work, and finally, together, we will create a program that will make the robot come alive, in a sense. Now, if you are interested in robotics lesson, if you would like to see and use the content you see behind me, head to robocamp.eu. That's where you can find more lessons like this one, more lesson plans, which you can use with your students. Now, if you are ready, let's start this lesson. Gorilla is one of the great apes and the largest among primates. Now, primates are animals that are mammals and they can be generally recognized by having dexterous hands, um, sharp sight, and large brain. By the way, humans are primates too. Now, let's go back to gorillas. You see, there are two gorilla species, western and eastern gorillas. They all live in Africa in subtropical forests south from the Sahara Desert. Now, although all gorillas are pretty big in size, males are significantly bigger. They can reach up to 400 pounds and six and a half feet. Now, in comparison, females are nearly two times lighter. Gorilla's fur is either blackish or dark brown in color, but it changes with age. You see, until they reach five years old, young gorillas have a distinctive patch of white fur on their bottom. It is a sign for older gorillas to be a bit more understanding of the young one, who may not obey all the rules of the group. Now, another change happens for male gorillas around their 13th birthday. You see, the fur on their backs turns silver, thus the name silverbacks. Now, from this age, they reach a high position in their social group hierarchy. Now, if you take a look at me and this friendly gorilla behind me, I'm sure you can find some differences, but there are similarities as well. You see, from the biological point of view, humans and gorillas are very close relatives. The DNA of humans and gorillas is in around 98% identical. But what is DNA? You see, DNA is a material passed from one generation to next in humans and all other organisms. It is a kind of code, a biological code, with precise instructions on how to create an organism. Now, thanks to DNA, uh, similarities between gorillas and humans are found not only in bodily structure. We have much more in common. For example, we develop very strong social bonds in a group. The first ever scientific description of a gorilla was made by Thomas Savage in 1847. However, the image of gorillas uh, actually changed much over time. You see, in 1933, the world saw the famous movie King Kong and started to think that gorillas are actually violent or dangerous. 
which of course is not the case. Now this has changed, fortunately, thanks to work of many scientists who are involved in carrying and research on gorillas and other great apes. Now, one of the most notable uh, well, persons here is a female Western gorilla, Coco, and her human caregiver, Francine Patterson. You see, Coco was an amazing gorilla. She understood spoken English and managed to learn over 1,000 signs of the modified American Sign Language. So, it's amazing because she could communicate with humans around her. She could communicate her feelings and they could also talk with her and understand each other. Now, the relationship between Coco and Francine Patterson really changed the world. <laughs> you see, from viewing gorillas as huge, scary monsters, people started seeing them as sensitive, empathetic beings, much like us. And caring about gorillas has never been as important as it is today. You see, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, gorillas are critically endangered. This means that very soon they may completely disappear from this earth. Despite great efforts, nowadays only 20% of all living gorillas live in safe places where they are protected. The remainder 80% of gorillas live in places where they are in constant danger. Gorillas are dying out and it is because of humans. The biggest human threat to gorillas is illegal hunting for bushmeat trade. You see, poachers lay out traps in forests hoping to catch gorillas and even if some animals manage to escape, they are wounded and wounds in tropical forests lead to either limb loss or death. Now, there are special veterinary programs created to help such wounded gorillas, but compared to the harm inflicted by poachers, it is still only a drop in the ocean. Humans are also responsible for the shrinking of gorillas' natural habitat. That is for destroying tropical and subtropical forests. They cut down trees or they take over entire areas for mining. An example of this was happened in Kahuzi Biega National Park, which was illegally taken over by miners after discovering large amounts of coal tan there. Now, the miners cared nothing for the local gorilla population, which resulted in drastic loss of these animals. The only good news here is that we can actually do something to improve this situation. You see, coal tan is used in cell phones and laptops. So before you replace your mobile phone with a new model, ask yourself, do you really need this? You see, not buying electronics unnecessarily can actually help gorillas because we won't need as much coal tan, which also means that gorillas won't be threatened in their forests. Finally, it's important to remember that just like us, gorillas suffer from illnesses and epidemics. And since we are so similar, it's not difficult for one illness to migrate from human to a gorilla. Which is why also gorillas now are so threatened. Any contact with humans can be dangerous for a gorilla. They are especially vulnerable to scabies, measles, and respiratory tract infections. 
Now, fortunately, in Rwanda or Uganda, tourists can buy a special permit to observe a gorilla family in their natural habitat. This is done safely. This is very important because you see, tourism can be beneficial for everyone, gorillas too, but it has to be responsibly planned, not done haphazardly, especially now during the world pandemic. Thank you so much for learning with me a bit about gorillas and finding out what can be done to help them. These are amazing creatures and they are certainly deserve to live on this world together with us. Thank you so much and in a moment we will create our own robotic gorilla. See you in the next video.